This is a 3090 Ti. That's a 4090. They're both from MSI. They're both Supreme X's. And today we're putting them head to head in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So without DLSS in 4K, the RTX 4090 is the clear winner getting up to 10 frames per second clear in a very demanding scenery area here in London. I have a significant number of airport add-ons in this area, so the system has a lot of work to do, with maybe a dozen or so add-on airports, Orbex's London City Landmark add-on, and with photogrammetry enabled. With the current release of the sim, it did, however, get some pretty confusing results with DLSS. The 3090 Ti was actually beating out the RTX 4090, which is confusing to say the least. However, the results in VR are very, very clear cut. With the addition of DLSS on the quality setting, the RTX 4090 takes a substantial lead over its predecessor. So I moved on to a test in the PA-28 over the dizzying skyline of New York City. Again, the TAA results were broadly the same as London with the RTX 4090 taking a significant performance lead. But again, I found the same strange results when using DLSS quality settings with the RTX 3090 Ti taking the lead yet again over the significantly more expensive card. It was only with the new DLSS versions enabled on the beta build of Sim Update 11, and that includes the use of DX12, where in my other tests I was making use of a DX11, that we really start to see the improvements. And that's not just necessarily in the frame rate, but in the visual quality too. See, you've got DLAA now in Sim Update 11. That's NVIDIA's deep learning anti-aliasing, which does a really fantastic job of providing a much clearer image. It's difficult to see on a YouTube video as the compression on the platform removes some of the image quality. But frankly, the image quality was better than TAA. Gauges and avionics were very clear indeed, even in VR, where the image quality was second to none. I was so impressed with the VR performance where I was getting well into the 80 frames per second, occasionally touching on 90 frames per second, making use of DLSS quality. But once you've seen the sim in VR with DLAA, you just can't go back. You shouldn't go back. It's worth the trade of frames for that amount of visual quality. And you're going to be losing anywhere between 50 to 20 frames per second, depending on the area you're in. It's early days for Microsoft Flight Simulator and the 4000 series of RTX cards. And you can see from my results, there is still a lot of CPU bottlenecking going on here. And that's with a 5800X3D, which is currently the best CPU for the sim. But the sim overall continues to be CPU bound due to the complex physics that's been calculated. It's certainly not a slam dunk for the 4090 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. And if you're playing on a monitor, then a cheaper, but a still very capable 3090 or 3090 Ti will still give you a great experience. But if you're playing in VR, the performance bump is pretty significant. And somewhat surprisingly, so is the visual quality. Remember here, folks, that Sim Update 11 is still in beta and still has some way to go. So let's hope there's some significant improvements in the time to come. I enabled the full frame adding in tech that Nvidia promised with double frame rates. I can't personally find a setting that gives that level of improvement, at least not yet. And I'm happy to be wrong if someone else can find a setting that does this. However, there's much more testing for me to do in the weeks to come. But remember, it's not too long ago that I was getting 30 frames per second in VR and not much more on a monitor. We're certainly moving in the right direction, but for the cost 
of a 4090, I really would have liked to have seen more. And I suspect it's not the card, it's Microsoft's ability to make the title less bound to the primary CPU thread. As always, I hope you're very well wherever in the world you are, stay safe in the skies, and I will see you in my next one.